But Mr. Minister, if that is the foundation, if that is the reality, right, as you have very cogently laid out, how do we move forward in addressing what is absolutely necessary in that you need a political settlement to the... I have been... How do you get... I have been consistent uh, in the... Uh, uh, but you and I agree on the necessity for yeah, this, yeah, yeah. but the picture you have painted doesn't I, I give too much of confidence correct, that it is not, possible. True. Now, for instance, as Minister of Constitutional Affairs, I am facing still, now for instance, the 70th Amendment, so all the commissions have gone out, out of gear mm. and the Constitutional Council mm. uh, lost its term and we are unable to resurrect the Constitutional Council for the simple reason that we are unable to bring out... Well, now, I as a minister, and I am, I am heading the uh, select committee of you know, the 70th Amendment, uh, I mean, nominated by the entire House, so not only I not as minister itself, but uh, I am the chairman of the National Committee and uh, select committee. Us trying for last so many months to bring up over the, some consensus of opinion among the opposition and the government. So, where, what, what's what's preventing this consensus? Petty politics. Now, now Petty not person. only at that level. Now, for right. instance, uh, now the constitutional council consists of ten members, right? Now, the prime minister, the president, and the leader of the opposition have to nominate. Then, one tenth member should be nominated by the minority parties of the opposition. That is the constitutional provision. Mm. Now, all others made nomination, but now the 10th member, they could not agree. At that stage, the JUHU, the Muslim Congress, and the TNA, and they and the speaker was trying, I myself tried my best to bring about for two years. Mm. I mean, they could not agree on a in the name. Mm. And what happened? The Attorney General took up the position, legal position, that all the ten members should be nominated, then only it will be properly constituted. Otherwise, it legally, it's, uh, it, it's not, can, can it cannot be constituted. So, see, now the other, another question of government. The three smaller parties could not arrive at a single nominee, and that what happened was constitutional council lapsed. Then the con all the commissions lapsed, and the, we are still in the United States. I'm going to come back to that, Mr. Minister, because one. Uh, allegation and accusation made by the minority parties that it is the intransigence of the executive and the, and the governing party that has prevented movement in this in this regard. I want to, however, touch upon unique almost experiences that you went through during a very dark chapter of our, of our bloody past in Sri Lanka, which is July 1983. Now, you have written about this and published some accounts of it. Uh, without going too much into detail, what is your dominant memory? from you were in remand prison, you were interrogated, uh, you experienced firsthand, in a sense, uh, the violence, the brutality on the street. But what is your dominant memory of that time, of that period? Oh, I, you know, I, I was really shocked when I got the, you know, when the, at 12, 11, so about 8 o'clock in the night, yeah. uh, it was announced over the radio and the TV that our party was banned. Right, the Communist Party was banned. Uh, we thought the JVP and some other, uh, the Vasu's party, banned. Then uh, immediately when the party was banned, I knew that the, the next decision will be that they will arrest leaders. So at that time, I was the treasurer of the party. So you know, I thought they will come to me. And it's a matter of two hours, you know, <laughs> they came uh, with armed forces, police and everything. They showed the defense secretary's warrant. Uh, you are under arrest. So I firmly agreed they went. Now, ironically, you went back for interrogation to the office that you worked in. Yeah. yeah. When they invented you. Right. Yeah. Uh, fifth floor. So, so familiar place then. Yes. But an unfamiliar. Same room. Right. In the right place, but, same yeah. room. So, I mean, I want to actually quote something yeah. that you've written. Um, you said that I vividly, and I uh, begin the quote, I yeah. vividly remember a question asked of me by a CID officer, i.e., did you try to overthrow the government? Yeah. yeah. And you say, I replied, I have not tried but I have a right to do so. But I shall not try to overthrow the state. Yeah. And you say, the CID officer looked perplexed. <laughs> you go on to say, so I explained to him the difference between state and the government and sense that he was in inwardly enlightened. <laughs> now, well, this is almost comical reading it today, <laughs> but clearly the situation then was far from correct, comical. Correct, correct, correct. Uh, I mean, what what was what was not really? On? You know that now the, that officer retired officer has become a friend of mine. Right, <laughs> you know? right. 
Now, he put that question. So, I knew, I mean, he was uh, then, uh, I mean, uh, that inspector. Uh, inspector. But now, all the time you were being questioned, things were happening outside. Yeah. Like people were being killed. People were being rounded up yeah. and burnt and ra raped. And, and know, that is how looting. the CID integrates. Uh, suddenly, they changed the subject and they put some other question. Right. Right. <laughs> so, right. So, it was, it, it was it, what did you feel that it was a bit absurd that you were being interrogated by the perpetrators of out on the streets? Uh, yes, but only thing when I, immediately when I was uh, taken to custody, now they put me in the car and on my way to the CID. But the inspector was, I mean, I must mention that, so charitable that <clears throat> he said, I personally don't think that you are involved, but we have to carry out orders. Mm. So then the, that, that gave a clue, saying that, you know, something other, something really, not that we were taken for having um, killed Tamil people. So it's a political decision. Mm. Mm. But you were asked as to who you think did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you quite clearly said it was Jaya <laughs> Jaya <Jayavadana. laughs> and, and, and what was the reaction then? The reaction, no. He got, he got upset and he said, yeah, I saw he was, his pen is not moving. Uh, I said, no, don't frighten. I take the fullest responsibility. I'll sign the statement. Then, uh, no, no, then he stopped it. And he said, right, then it was by about 1 o'clock, 1 a.m., I think, mm. 1 or 2 a.m. Mm. He said, no, tomorrow morning I'll come. Probably I knew that he won't get his instructions from the Arab as to whether the person who that light of uh, questioning. So on the following morning he came and started again. Yeah. And then he wrote it out. I said, I won't sign it unless you write it. I won't sign this statement. You have to. But what gave you the courage, the strength to stand up to an executive then? And I'm not I had political connection. I was, I was prepared for any eventuality. Mm. You know, really, you know, the, what I, that particular night, evening, I don't know whether I had mentioned it that, you know, there's a friend of mine who was JMO, Colombo, Tamil. Was, was, you have actually, yes. Yeah, yeah. He, 12 midnight, the, he telephoned me. He says, my father died of heart attack. Then I knew that, you know, his, uh, his wife was in the personal college refugee. No, this is when Colombo was burning. Colombo was burning. Yeah. And he was a doctor mm. and he was... We had to seek refuge somewhere in a nursing home. Then in the meantime, uh, the father also died. The mother is staying somewhere else and he is helpless.